Hello there. Welcome to Wednesday Night with Pastor Jeff. My name's Jeff Magger and I'm the pastor at Sulphur Christian Church in Henry County, Kentucky. And uh, excited to have you here with me tonight. And uh, we're going to talk about um, Jesus. We're going to talk about children. We're going to talk about a correlation and a scripture that talks about the two of them. And we'll, I'll explain that in just a few minutes. So uh, again, so happy to have you here. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of our family, uh, whether you attend regularly with us, whether you visit via Facebook or YouTube or however you see us and um, are part of us. Thank you. And we are blessed that you're a part of us and we're blessed that you uh, come and worship the Lord with us in however you do. So we're just thankful. I'm thankful, thankful to have you, thankful to know you. So tonight, what are we gonna do? We're gonna talk about the Bible and we're gonna talk about a specific uh, passage in the Bible and how it pertains to really a lot of what's going on uh, in our worlds right now. We'll talk about that again here in just a minute. But if you don't have it, I need you to go grab your Bible. You'll need your Bible. You'll need pen, paper, uh, something to write on and with. Or if you, you know, take notes digitally, however you do it, whatever works best for you. But we're going to engage together. We're going to look at God's Word together tonight. I'd love for you to have your Bible handy uh, while we look at this passage of Scripture. And here in just a moment, uh, we're going to look at uh, Luke chapter 18. We're going to look at verses 9 through 14 and also 15 through 17. But I'll, well, again, we'll get to that here in just a second. So I'd love for you to grab your Bible, get, a, get some nice cold water, stay hydrated, and uh, join me with your Bible, uh, with something to take notes, your journal, uh, just a loose piece of paper. You can write it down somewhere else later. But I'm telling you, it helps us remember. We write things down and then we can go back if we have questions or if we want to go deeper, we have a starting place to do that. So I'd love for you to take notes and study this again on your own and pray about it. And God will do amazing things in your life when you study his word and when you allow him to transform you. It's a wonderful and beautiful thing that the God has given us. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we praise you and we thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for letting us come to you just the way we are, day in and day out. You just keep loving us, even when we mess up, even, even when we make mistakes. You're there. You're always with us. You're always ready for us to turn and hug your neck and say, I'm sorry for the things I've done. And you're always ready to forgive us and move on and keep loving us. So we're just so thankful, Father God, that you love us so much so much that you have stuff going on. Lord, we all need you. And we're so thankful for you, Lord. Bless this time. In your name we pray. Amen. So, here we go. So, uh, today, um, I don't know when you're watching this. You might be watching this years from now. For Just put things in perspective. Today, uh, I, I'm an employee also, not just a pastor. I'm also an employee of uh, Shelby County Public Schools. Today was the first day. First day of school for children. Okay, the first day the kids came. I've been working a week and a half. But the kids came for the first day today. My little one, my nine-year-old Maddie, she went to fourth grade for the first day today. Hundreds, thousands all over uh, Shelby County and, and maybe your county too. But in the next week or so, everybody's kids is going to be back in school in one form or another. Hey, I want to have a lesson for us to learn tonight. Not just for kids, for us grown-ups. For us grown-ups. 
So if you have your Bible, I'd love for you to open it up to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, and we're going to begin with verse 15 through 17. That's our starting point. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So open your Bibles, Luke 18, verse 15 and 17. That's where we're going to start. Okay, that's our jumping in point. And I'll explain and you'll see why here in just a few minutes. Okay, are you ready? Everybody ready? Show of hands. All right, everybody looks like they're ready to go. So awesome. Luke 18, 15 through 17. You know this, I bet. I bet you know this. A lot of folks do. But listen to this. We're going to take a, a, a little different ride on this passage tonight, okay? People were also bringing babies to Jesus to have him touch them. When the disciples saw them, so Jesus said, let the children come to me. Let the little ones come. Let them be here. Let them be here. Let them be with us. Let the children come to me. After the disciples, the, the followers, the people with Jesus were trying to keep the kids away from him, okay? But Jesus said uh, in verse 16 and 17, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Maybe you've heard that a time or two, maybe more than that over the course of your lifetime, where Jesus said, let these, let these kids come to me. They need to come to me. Why would you keep their children from Jesus, right? But I want to, we're going to backtrack here in just a moment. But we on these kind of days when our kids go back to school, maybe your grandparents, right, Ken? Maybe your, your uh, adult children have, have kids now and they're dealing with the things we dealt with a few years ago. And uh, Rose and I, we're doing it all over again with, with Miss Maddie. We, we've already done the, the first five, number six. Okay, we're starting over. We started over a little bit older age, but we try to always have time for our children. We try to always listen to our children. And if we don't, we should because they need us. They desire and deserve our attention, our patience, our grace. And again, we'll, we'll go a little bit deeper into that just in a few minutes. But so why do you think the disciples tried to keep these parents. Okay, now, well, first of all, we need to understand they weren't rebuking the children. They weren't rebuking the babies. They were rebuking the parents who were bringing the babies. They were bringing babies for Jesus to lay hands on them and bless them and pray over them and touch them. And, and everybody believed, you know, that Jesus was doing something special for the, their children and he was he was so the disciples are trying to keep this from happening why because Jesus is in the middle of teaching Jesus is in the middle of teaching and and he's telling parables and he's teaching the people and I don't think it's any coincidence that this happens immediately following Luke 18 9 through 14, okay, which is the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. I don't think there's any coincidence. I don't think there's any mistake that in the middle of these parable teachings, Jesus says, let them come to me. They're important. They can interrupt what's going on right now. As important as what he was teaching, as important as what he was talking about, when somebody had a need, he said, hang on, this is important, but this needs to be addressed right now. And he knew, though he needed to bring those babies, he needed to, they needed to bring those kids to him. And imagine the impact 
on those children's lives, on those parents' lives, when Jesus said, wait, stop the meeting. Let's stop church and let's take care of these children and their parents. It's an important lesson for us. It's a very important lesson for us. For many of us, and I know many of the people who watch uh, Wednesday night with Pastor Jeff and, and watch our Sunday morning services and come to our su Sunday services, our, our teachers, our educators, our people who have have children, their parents and grandparents, and they are invested in their children. We need to be very careful with this generation of children because them being put off and put off and put off and put off has gotten so out of hand. I've always told my congregation, I'm okay if your children make noise. I don't want it totally to disrupt where I can't think and speak or, or people can't hear. But, you know, I, I've always said we have family worship at Sulphur Christian Church. Bring your kids into the sanctuary. We all need to be together. We all need to be there together. We all need to learn together, grow together, and be together. And even if your kids aren't getting the full scope and understanding of what the teaching is, they're there in the presence of the Lord with worshiping adults, parents. We need to be and help get our children in front of Jesus. And if we have to stop church to do it, then we do it. Jesus modeled that for us right here in this passage. Now listen, I'm gonna read the scripture before Luke 18, 15 through 17. We're gonna go back before that. I want you to understand that before Jesus, that before the disciples rebuked parents for bringing the children to him, before that, I want you to hear what Jesus was teaching. I want you to hear, yes, the disciples wanted Jesus to not be interrupted while he taught, but we want to see why and how he stopped and why he thought the children were so important and you and me. So let's go back. Uh, Luke 18, beginning with verse 9. This is the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, but listen to the wording of this. And then think about what we just read about Jesus and allowing the children to come to him. Listen, verse nine, to some who were confident in their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. So who is he directing this parable to? People that were overconfident and looking down on other people. And this was Pharisees, this was the holy and righteous and the, the more, you know, holier than thou's and whatever, you, whatever terminology you want to use. These are the people Jesus is talking to. This is who, to some who were confident in their own righteousness and looked down on everybody else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee and the other, a tax collector, the Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself. God, I thank you that I'm not like other men. I'm not a robber or evildoers or adulterers or even like this tax collector. Wow. Okay. Do we hear this kind of language in our world today? Yes, we do. Verse 12, I fast twice a week and I give, give a tenth of all that I get. But the tax collector stood up at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but he beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled and he who humbles himself will be exalted. 
Okay. Immediately following this parable, Jesus' own disciples were so caught up in Jesus not being interrupted that they said, stop it. Don't bring these babies. Don't bring these kids. This isn't the time and the, or the place. Doesn't that remind you a little bit of the overconfident person looking down on others? Didn't the disciples basically make the moms and dads who were bringing their kids and children to see Jesus feel like he was looking down upon them, that they weren't that important, that their children weren't that important. How have you ever felt if somebody said or made you feel that your children weren't that important? Don't go there with mama bear, right? No. So here we go. Jesus is teaching this parable. He's teaching this lesson. People are bringing their kids, their babies to Jesus to be blessed, for him to touch them, for him to speak over them, for him just to be with them. And just like the woman who crawled through the crowd on her hands and knees who had been hemorrhaging, and she thought in her mind, if he, I can just touch the hem of his robe, that's what these parents were doing. They were bringing their children. Many of them might have tra traveled miles and miles. Some of these children might have had birth defects or illnesses or, or sicknesses or something going on that they felt like, if I could just get my baby to this Jesus, I think he can, I believe he can do something. So folks, you have children, if you have grandchildren, if, if you have neighborhood children that you see out and about unsupervised, we need to get them to Jesus. We need to get them close to Jesus, especially our kids and our grandkids, the ones that we had the most time with or, or dealings with or influence over whatever you want to call it. We need to get our children, our children to Jesus. And we need to stop looking down our nose at other parents. We need to stop looking down our nose at the unchurched. And we need to get people to Jesus. We need to stop playing church and get people to Jesus. That's what exactly Jesus is saying here. He teaches this parable. Not only does Jesus say, guys, let the children come to me. Let them come to me. What's he say? He says, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. Stop church, stop church, and let the people who need Jesus get to Jesus. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth. Man, let me tell you one thing. When Jesus says, I tell you the truth, you better listen. This is important. This is, this is up there. This is top tier teaching from Jesus when he says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he just taught about a Pharisee and the tax collector. And he comes right out and says, the tax collector who says, I'm a sinner, forgive me, have mercy on me, on me, God, on my, me, God, has a better chance of getting in heaven than the Pharisee who has all that knowledge, but he's all blown up, puffed up, the Bible says. He's all puffed up in his pride, in his knowledge, and his self-proclaimed righteousness and wisdom who says, I'm not like other people. I'm better than them. 
oh Lord, I don't do this and I don't do that. In fact, what I do is I give my tithes and I pray all the time. In fact, I'll pray right here in front of all these people so they can see me. Look at me, look at me. Those who don't get close to Jesus, who don't stop and go up and get on his lap and hear what he has to say and let him put his arm around us. Those of us who don't get there, who don't sit at his feet and hear what he has to say. Those of us who haven't fallen in love with Jesus, we may not enter the kingdom of heaven. But if we, if we will go to him like a child, and it takes, sometimes it takes, some people it takes a lifetime, let's just be honest. Some folks can have that sweet, compassionate, pure heart that can just go go to Jesus and I don't know how much they have to change. But listen, we need to get our children and our grandchildren close to Jesus and give them that opportunity to, to hear his voice, to see his face, to understand and fall in love with him. And we need to do that for children of all ages, from the youngest to the oldest. We need to get people to Jesus. And what Jesus is saying here is don't let, don't let traditions, don't let um, routines, don't let what's happening stop the opportunity for a child to come to him at any moment. Stop what you're doing. Stop in the middle of church. Stop in the middle of a meeting. Stop at home in the middle of a movie. Stop when you're trying to work at home or get something done or cook dinner or wash dishes or vacuum the house or or write a paper or uh, be on a phone call about nothing. If your children need to see Jesus Stop it. Stop. Let them come to Jesus. Let them be there with him. It's more important. Our, the, the spirit, souls, saving grace of Jesus in our children and grandchildren and adult lives are far more important than anything else we do. Let the little children, let everyone come to me and do not hinder them. Don't hinder people from getting to Jesus. Don't stop them. Don't say knucklehead stuff in church that makes somebody that's so close to receiving the gift of salvation turn around and walk out because of something knuckleheaded that we say or do. Please, please, disciples, don't keep people don't keep babies, don't keep children, don't keep the lost from getting to Jesus. Make a way, make an open route for people to get to Jesus. And the world will begin to change in your world right around you. Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these I tell you the truth, anyone who does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. So before we close tonight, I want to go over this last section uh, a little more in depth. Verse 17, I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. So what do we need to do? Listen, I don't care how long you've been going to church. How many times you've read through the Bible. How many daily devotions you've done in a row. How many your scriptures and Jesus posts gets liked or loved on Facebook or 
X or Twitter, whatever that is, or Instagram or whatever hun other hundred of social media outlets, uh, th that, that in the scheme of things isn't as important as do we steer people to Jesus and do we allow them to get to him? Do we set our pride? Do we set our routines? Do we set what our idealized way of doing things? Can we set that aside? Can we stop be, having church and be the church because we're opening the doors wide up? We're making a walkway for people to get straight to Jesus. Is that what we're doing? So what's it mean when he says, Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Now listen to this. Listen, I've got four things about little children. And when I say little children, I'm, I mean, okay, I've been in elementary schools with preschool, kindergarten up to fifth grade. I've been in middle schools and I've spent many years, over a decade, in high school situation. They think they're wearing big pants, but they're kids. They're kids. They're children. Okay, they don't want to believe that. They don't want to buy into that, but it's just the truth. They still need us adults to steer them. They still need us to help them. They still need us to care and love and teach and discipline and do all the things that good people do when kids are around. We need to help be a blueprint, a map that leads to Jesus. We, and we need to make sure we are being what we need to be. So listen, what is that according to what Jesus teaches here? to be like a little child. Well, what's that mean? Well, number one, is to be like a little child, you have to have total dependence. Total dependence. Listen, do you remember when you were a kid when mom and dad pretty much did everything for you? I mean, when you were an infant, you had no choice. You had to be fed, you had to be clean, you had to be taken care of in every way. You had to be watched to make sure you didn't roll over and suffocate in your bed. You, you know, your diaper had to be changed. You had to go, you know, everything, everything had to be done. You had to be given medicine. You couldn't take medicine if you were sick. You know, somebody had to take your temperature to see if you had a fever. Everything had to be done for you and you had total dependence. In order for us to have full citizenship of heaven, we have to have total dependence on Jesus, total dependence upon God, because everything good and lasting comes from him. Number one thing, when he's talking about to be like a little child, to be like a little child, we need to have total dependence on him. And, you know, we kind of have to learn or relearn. Once we have learned how to do, you know, most everything ourselves for ourselves, we need to turn back that back around and say, God, I'm really not very good at much. I need you to do everything. I need you, you to be in control of everything. I need you. I want to be dependent upon you. Number two, we need to have full trust in God. That's a lot of faith. When the bills are rolling in and the bank account doesn't look very healthy, we need to put our full trust in him. When maybe we get that diagnosis of an illness or sickness or disease, we need to put our full trust in him. That does indeed go along with dependence, but we have to trust him. You know, you remember being a little kid walking along and you put your hand up for your parent to get, for your, especially dad, I mean, mom too. But you know, when you were a little nervous, when you were a little scared, yeah, I know, you know, I could reach up my hand. I knew my daddy's hand was gonna take mine. 
I also knew I was going to feel safer and better and less anxious because I had a hold of my father's hand. That needs to be us. We need to be like when Peter started sinking into the sea and he's under the water looking up at Jesus standing on top of the water. Jesus reaches his hand down. We need to be like Peter. We need to get that hand up. We need to trust that he's going to pull us out of whatever we're in and he's going to make sure we're safe. We need to have total dependence upon God. We need to have an entire true trust in him, a full trust. Number three, this is a toughie, okay? It just is, even with God. But it's the way children operate, okay? Number three, transparency, transparent openness. We, okay, let's just remember we have no secrets from God. We, don't, we can't keep secrets from him, so we should be transparent. We should be completely open with him. We should have that openness with him. And th then, then the, if we trust him and if we're totally dependent up on him, just like a child, we can say, Daddy, Daddy, I need you because I need you here or I need you there. I have areas of my life. I got to have more of you. I need you. I need you, God. So we need complete, total dependence. We need full trust. We need transparent openness. We need to be completely open with God, knowing that there is no dark corners that he's not been in with us, okay? And then number four, number four, we need complete sincerity. You can't fake it with God. You just can't, you know? Yeah, I've always loved it when I've asked one of our kids about something, you know, maybe we, we already knew what they had done or not done. And I've always loved it when um, I'll say, hey, do you want to tell me anything? Is there anything you need to tell me or mom? I mean, really, is there, is it, has anything happened? Well, yeah, yeah, it did. We, you, you guys were gone and we were, we were playing and, um, and our sister fell down the laundry chute from the second floor into the basement. Okay, all right. Well, thank you for telling me the truth. As hard as that was to be completely sincere and transparent, thank you for that. Hey, sincerity goes a long way because guess what? Trust works back and forth with transparency, with openness, and with sincerity. You know, tell God how, you're, how you really feel. And don't worry that he might be get angry with you or be disappointed with you because you've told him the truth. You've been sincere. No, God will not do that. God will listen because God knows. And don't forget he knows you better than anybody else and better than anybody ever will. So I want to I wanna go over these again. And again, we're studying Luke 18, uh, primarily 15 through 17, about when the disciples don't want parents bringing their babies to Jesus and interrupting them while he's teaching. And then he says, no, man, let the children come to me. Let the little ones come. We're studying that. We're talking about that. In, in, at the, in the 17th verse, he says, um, I'll tell you the truth. Anyone who does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. So these four things I want you to consider. Hopefully you've written these down and you can think about and study and meditate on these. In order to be like a child, you have to, you have, to have total dependence on God. You have to, too, have full trust. Man, if you tell me to fall backwards off a cliff, 
you know what you're talking about, God. Okay, great. Number three, number three, transparent openness with God. Just, you, you're dealing with somebody that you have no secrets from, but he wants your heart to be able to talk to him openly, openly all the time. So total dependence, full trust, transparent openness, and number four, complete sincerity. Tell God the truth and tell him everything. And let me tell you what, if we will open us Christians, us churchy people, us believers, the, those of us who go to church maybe every weekend, every time the doors are open, if we will make sure that the aisle way to Jesus is always open, that people can bring their children, their babies, their loved ones, their grandchildren, uh, their brothers, sisters, mom, dads, aunt, uncles, whoever needs to get close to Jesus. If we could just make sure that always, all the time, there's a pathway to Jesus, then we can learn to live in the kingdom of God like a child. And people will be so attracted, attracted to the kingdom of God because of what they'll see in, around, and through us. So think about that. Maybe you need know somebody who needs to hear this. Share this with somebody who needs to hear this. Maybe a parent or a grandparent. Maybe uh, just someone who needs that open pathway to Jesus. Maybe there's a, a believer you know that has struggled, struggled mightily and, and maybe need this. So share, share this with people. And if there's others, other Wednesday nights or Sunday mornings and the, the message just, you, you, somebody's name comes into your head, share, share it with them. And then if they need to talk to you or if they need to talk to me, by all means, my, my door is always open. My phone is always ready to receive. I, I want that pathway to Jesus open all the time. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Prayerfully consider what we've talked about tonight, whether you're at church, whether you're at work, whether you're at home. Am I keeping access to Jesus wide open for my children, grandchildren, and people I know and love and come in contact with? Am I keeping that wide open? Let's pray about that. Lord Jesus, Father God, help us, show us how we can always keep the pathway to Jesus open. It's so easy to get busy or mired in all that we have to do. And, and maybe we, we sometimes truly, honestly, allow ourselves to become too busy to help lead people to Jesus. And there's nothing more important there's nothing more important than allowing people to get to the love of Jesus and to his sweet salvation. So Father God, Lord Jesus, help us to always be aware and help us to be like little children. Lord Jesus, help us. Help us to have complete dependence upon you. Lord Jesus, help us to have full trust in you. Lord Jesus, help us to have transparent openness with you, Father God, and help us to, uh, of course, have full, complete sincerity with you. And Lord, help us to teach others that these, these are the way we need to be like little children and come to Jesus. Father God, we praise you and thank you. Thank you for this night. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this lesson. Father God, uh, let it live in my heart and in the way I live. And Father God, with everybody who sees it and hears it, Father God, just grow it in us. Uh, Father God, that we have that pathway to you and your love wide open for everybody around us. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. God bless you all. I love you so much. And I can't wait to see you again. Love to see you in person at 8447 Sulphur Road, Sulphur, Kentucky at our beautiful little church, Sulphur Christian Church. I love to see your smiling face out there on a Sunday morning. 10 a.m. Sunday school, all ages. Come on, come see us. 
uh, and 11 o'clock family worship. And when I say that, I mean it, bring them on, bring them all, bring them right in there with us. And we'll sing and we'll pray and we'll laugh and we'll learn and we'll cry together and all those things. It's a beautiful place with beautiful people and we'd love to have you there with us. You're so, so blessed and we're so blessed to know you. God bless you and I'll see you real soon.